All right. Good morning, everyone. I have Sierra Smith back today, and she just got back from FinCon over the weekend. So we're going to talk about that and talk about her experience. And welcome back, Sierra. Hey, thanks for having me back. And yeah, I was at FinCon this last week, and it was my first one. And I want to give them a shout out because they did give me a scholarship to go as a first time, like financial content creator who, uh, who had never been before. So I appreciate them scholarshiping my ticket and I had a good time. So let's talk more about that. Actually, you know, maybe let's back up a little bit because maybe people don't really know what FinCon is all about. So maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Sure. So FinCon is the convention, like a finance convention, and it's particularly targeting financial content creators. So that's kind of where I started seeing um, in like on, on ads on Instagram and stuff about um, if you're a financial content creator, that this is kind of the event for you to, you know, you can take classes from really great um, people who are teaching on, you know, leading virtual communities or who are, um, maybe financial advisors and sharing a lot of content like on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, um, YouTube famous people who might be in like the real estate space. Like there's a lot of different um, platforms that are covered. And yeah, so that's, it's just kind of a convention for all of those people to link up and network and learn from each other. So tell us all about it. So you, how many days was it? How many days were you there? And is it like all day events going on? So it's a, let's see, four-day event, maybe five days, um, but I only went to three days of it. So I I made sure to go uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I drove in on Wednesday, um, and but didn't quite make it um, to any events going on Wednesday. It ha- it does fill the, fill the day for sure. It's not like straight classes from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or anything like that. They do have like a break between um, like around the lunch hour for but there's a lot of time there's meetups going on then. So you can still kind of fill your day with with the events that they have going on. And then they have like a break around dinner time. And then um, they would have like an opening party in the evening, a movie one evening, and then like a closing party on the last day. So there's some stuff going on in the evenings as well as like dinner clubs. So like other things that you can do, um, that are a little bit more like scheduled outside of just the classes, but the classes are mostly like in the mornings and afternoons. Well, so I guess what is your biggest takeaway from it? Did you like the class settings or was it more just a networking or what was your experience with that? So my biggest takeaway was for sure that the like in-person relationships and just relationships in general, uh, that networking part is really the tried and true, like key to success. And if you got into a conversation with someone, um, you know, after a class and that, and you were really like linking up with them, like it was almost worth it to skip your next class to like, make sure that that relationship that you were building or that connection was, um, really solid. So I've found that a lot of people like stayed out in the hallways and did a lot more mingling than just making sure that they were hitting all of the classes. Oh, so going into it, was there like certain people that you were trying to maybe seek out or, like, who did you connect with while you were there? Yeah, so I was intentionally hoping to meet up with other real estate uh, investors and people creating content around real estate, since that's kind of more of my interest. Um, but I was specifically hoping to see Hugo there because that was like the only person I had like a little connection with um, just from having you as a mutual friend. And so Hugo from Stay Winning Pod, um, I made sure to link up with him while I was there. And then um, and then I wanted to make sure I met Tom, uh, the frugal gay and uh, Alan Corey. We talked about him from, let's see, the real estate maxi. So like those people, I kind of had a little bit of like an eye out for and and Tom and Alan were teaching one of the classes that I knew I was going to attend. So I kind of knew that I was going to see them. But other than that, I was just like, okay, I want to link up with some other real estate people. But then once I got there and I started realizing like, oh, there's like people who specialize in using like your credit card points. And there's like people who are, you know, CPAs and, you know, specifically do like real estate tax strategy. So then I was like, okay, there's other people here for sure that I need to make sure that I make some connections with. So I did that as well. 
that's what I was going to ask next was like, what was like the hot topic was people, was there a lot of like uh, crypto classes going on, like taxes, uh, social media, what would you say was like the kind of the biggest attractions there? Oh, um, hmm, that's interesting. Like the around the crypto stuff, the probably the movie, the documentary that was being put on, like there was a lot of kind of buzz around that. But for the most part, as or as far as the classes go, it was more, I would say, a lot on like monetizing different ways to monetize content and like the work that you're doing. So whether that's like by hosting meetups or um, you know, getting uh, brand deals or affiliate links or other like partnerships or sponsorships. Like they have a whole expo center of companies that sponsored the event that were specifically looking for content creators to partner up with. So like, I would say that was probably the main focus is just like more monetization of like everything that you're doing and producing as far as content creation goes. Man, that sounds like, I wish I could have made it there, but I guess I can't just drive there. Like, some people <laughs> right yeah. yeah that would be quite the trip um yeah there's there's definitely there's a lot of information you know like you could take a class specifically on like monetizing your email newsletter or monetizing your youtube channel or you know how to get more sponsorships or how to get featured in mainstream like media sources so like there was very specific classes that you could attend so but there were a lot going on at the same time so there would be three or four classes going on at like nine o'clock in the morning and you had to pick the one that you wanted to go to so there's still a lot of information that i missed out on getting just by having to pick one class um for that time slot did you get a lot of content done while you're there like were you able to do any like recordings with other um, speakers there or you know other people that attended the event yeah so I didn't um and I honestly didn't even see many people recording now they I didn't I stayed in Airbnb I didn't stay at the hotel so there's a good chance that some people staying at the hotel probably had their setups maybe up in their room and so maybe I just didn't see it happening because the lobby area was pretty loud but I didn't see a lot of people recording um out in the lobby, maybe, I mean, less than like five. And I didn't end up recording anything. I did take my stuff just in case. And I caught, I thought maybe I would record a video back at my Airbnb uh, each evening, like just a recap, but I didn't even get to do that. So, um, so yeah, I did not get a lot of content made, but I did get, I would say probably at least six connections that would were said they would be willing to be like on my YouTube channel for an interview so I can follow up with them and get like a Zoom uh, call scheduled. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. uh, would you say like, was it different meeting people in person than just, you know, over, you know, YouTube or Zoom or whatnot? Oh yeah, for sure. Like it, they feel way more approachable. And like I was talking to you before um, we hopped on the call that a lot of times I ended up in a conversation with someone before I even knew like what kind of following they had or like who they actually were or putting like a, the their social media name with their face. And so people were very approachable and, and they wanted to hear about what you were doing. And there were several times I ended up in conversations and then I would ask, you know, like, hey, where can I follow you now? And I would get on, you know, their Instagram page or their podcast page and be like, oh, you're kind of like a big deal already. <laughs> and so there weren't, uh, you know, there were lots of small time creators there for sure. And I'm definitely one of those, but there were also lots of big time creators there that were very willing to, you know, connect with you and, and follow back. And I got, you know, a lot of, you know, great relationships that way too, that I'm excited about. Yeah. That was going to be my next question that you're saying kind of, you know, for like the smaller uh, content creators, like, you know, a lot of times you, you might be kind of, uh, overwhelmed by going there and you're like, oh, I don't think I fit in and whatnot. So how is that for you? Do you think like these, like you're saying, the bigger content creators, were they very approachable and helpful and willing to speak with everyone? Yeah, I, for sure they were. And I mean, there were even lots of people there who aren't even creating content currently. They're just like thinking about wanting to. So there were like, there was one guy that I linked up with that is a real estate investor and, you know, he has lots of doors and he, he's in new Orleans, but like, he doesn't create any content around, um, around his real estate journey. And so he was there just trying and to figure out like, okay, like how, how can I create like a social media presence around real estate since I'm already in that realm. And, um, so there'd be people there who, you know, 
you'd be like, okay, can I follow you? And they're like, well, I don't even have an account for you to follow yet. So, I mean, there was the whole spectrum of people. And I think that um, when it comes to the bigger time creators, what I heard the most is that they, they can easily decipher between someone who's like trying to build a relationship that's like meaningful and someone who's just trying to like use them to scale their own platform. And so I think as long as you're there with the right attitude, and I think that that's kind of like one of the ways that they uh, decipher it's just like the people who are willing to pay to be at this conference are probably people who are really committed to the journey and are, you know, uh, like-minded with them. And so I think when they're, um, when they're looking at all the people talking to them there, they're, they're like, these are, our, these are our people. And so they were more willing to just like really open up. I mean, they, they, um, they gave me tons of tips on like running Airbnb or like how to design a short-term rental that's successful. Like there were, I mean, there's just like a million, um, little nuggets of information that were being shared and, and no one seemed hesitant to have a conversation with you or seemed unapproachable at all. So now that you've gone to this event and, you know, we're both going to the one rental at a time event in February, does this kind of help prepare you? Like maybe uh, what questions you might have prepared or does it kind of, are you just going to go and wing it again in, in Vegas? Uh, I will probably have more questions prepared for Vegas, but that's probably because I I have followed that channel and know the guests who are speaking. And so I know specifically like what kinds of questions I would ask them. Like I said, at this event, I would be mid conversation, you know, with someone before I really even found out who I was talking to. And so then my it was hard to prepare questions for those situations. Um, it was definitely more about just like linking up and networking and having those connections so that if you do have a question in the future, like, you know who to ask. But for Vegas, I think that this definitely um, prepared me to like, like understand how, um, how those connections are made and like how the networking is made possible by um, just building those relationships. And I think I, I will show up for sure with more prepared questions. And it's going to be a little bit different because like the class sizes for this were broken out into, you know, there might be between 30 and 70 people in a class. Whereas like the one real at a time event is going to be like the whole group in one room. And um, so there's going to be a lot more people asking questions for each thing. So I I'll take better notes probably and try to record a little bit more content. I think, I think that's one area where I feel like uh, I I could have like at least walked around and like asked people for like, Hey, tell me one thing that you do or something where I could have created like at least, you know, a month's worth of content, just getting short clips. And so I'll probably make an effort to do more of that at Vegas as well. So do you think like going to these events, it's beneficial to maybe go with someone else so that you guys can like be take recording each other and helping each other out make content. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it would be if, I mean, if you could have someone follow you around all day with a camera, that'd be amazing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you, I mean, even like, I, I think I mentioned this before, but you know, I went to the movie and Hugo was there and, and which I'm not in the crypto space at all, but he is. And, you know, I knew that he was, um, going to talk to one of the panelists afterwards. So I was like, Hey, you want me to film for you? Uh, you know, while you talk to them, cause I'm, I'm not invested in this conversation at all, but I'm happy to stand here with the camera. And so like that worked out really well. And so now he'll have, you know, probably three to five minutes of footage that he can use for, for content for him. So just, just knowing someone that you feel like comfortable enough to be like, Hey, will you stand here for 10 minutes and just record me talking, <laughs> uh, or record this conversation or take a photo for me? Like that is helpful. I'm sure that in these, you know, in these meetups, you could probably ask anyone and they would be willing to do it, but it is easier if you, if you know someone that's for sure. And if you know someone too, that you could like, um, you know, in the evenings, once everything is done, like you could just meet up in the lobby or something and say like, Hey, let's, you know, let's film a 10 minute video before we, you know, head off for the day. Like that would be great too. Yeah. So you keep mentioning Hugo, Hugo Alonzo from stay winning pod. So how was it meeting the lone wolf in person? <laughs> so I've only met him, you know, through YouTube and zoom and social media and whatnot. So I have not met him in person, but he seems like such a cool guy down to earth so how was it meeting him in person uh yeah very much the same as he you know it appears on camera like down to earth very um calm and collected and <laughs> uh, 
uh, you know, he had a lot going on this trip and I can't wait for him to share more of that. And we, we caught up over lunch and I'll say that I have never laughed harder uh, than I did at lunch with him um, on the last day of the event. So his storytelling is great. Uh, the, the craziness that he went through. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to share any of it. That's definitely his stuff to tell, but it definitely, it definitely was entertaining. So I think that if you, uh, or wanting to follow someone who's super genuine and just loves what he does and loves helping his his followers, like that's a that's a great person to follow. Yeah, I, I same thing with you and me too. Like I love more of the off camera stuff a lot of times that we talk <laughs> yeah. about, and it it's very entertaining. But uh, you also mentioned meeting like Alan Corey and um, Tom Brickman, the Frugal Gay, who they mm-hmm. have their own podcast, you know, House Money Media. And they have their own personality too. And I love their content. And how how was it sitting down with them? Uh, It was awesome. And Tom was a great resource and was super happy to connect and share a lot of, you know, how he's getting deals these days and let me ask a bunch of questions. Uh, Alan, same way I did. I got into a conversation with Alan in one of the classes and I didn't know who he was until, you know, until the conversation was over. And so, but they were both just very, yeah, they really great personalities and very authentic. And I, um, and I told Tom specifically how much I appreciated his social media presence being one that was, that was so authentic that it's almost easier to engage on his social media because you realize like he's sharing very, um, like the details of what real life looks like, like the wins and the losses and the, the good and the bad. And it, I just feel like he creates a space on, um, especially on Instagram. That's where I have followed him the most, where it's just very, um, enjoyable and relatable. And so I, I thanked him for that too. And, but yeah, they, they love to like riff off each other and it's a very, uh, they have a very good dynamic, especially for their podcasts, like going between the three of them. And so it was was great to meet them in person and just kind of like see that play out. Like even when they're not recording, like that's just their personalities. So that was pretty fun. Yeah, you have to follow them on on Twitter and and social media. They're because like Tom's always making fun of Alan's um, attire, like what's he wearing in his in his pictures and whatnot. And for those of you that don't know, Alan Corey, he kind of talks about or posts about it too. But I guess he was uh, he was on like Jerry Springer back in the days. He was on Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, but he has a I guess a, a TV history also to him and. Uh, it, but yeah, those, those, they're very entertaining. Yes, for sure. And they, on their panel, they even had, um, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but their handle is rethink the rat race. And they had him up there and he even like got in on, you know, on the banter, uh, with Alan and, um, they got some good lines in, even as they were just like answering questions on the panel from the audience. So they, they kept the, the entertainment going. And and that was a really enjoyable one, as opposed to like a lot of the classes were just one person teaching from like a PowerPoint. And so that's, that's another thing I was going to say, I'm really looking forward to Vegas because I know that there's not going to be PowerPoints and there's going to be a lot of time for Q and a, and I learned way more out of the Q and a than I did the, you know, 30 minute talk. And so I'm really looking forward to the questions being, um, the driving force of what is being discussed because a lot of times after their talks, there was only time to answer two or three questions, but there were, those were way more valuable than uh, the talk themselves. Cause I just think that it's hard to know exactly what your audience needs until they start asking you. And so once you get in that room and, and people are like, okay, I came prepared with this specific question for you, then you're really getting down to like the nitty gritty of executing these strategies. So I'm looking forward to that in Vegas. And I think that's a really great way that that event has been designed. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that also. Um, but we, you know, we kind of only mentioned Alan and Tom, but we, we didn't mention their their other partner, Lauren from Adulting is Easy. And she kind of, mm-hmm. like, like you said, their personalities all fit well. She's like that kind of stoic kind of in between and kind of like yeah it just works where the dynamics between all three of them 
Yeah, she's very sharp witted and gets a like will get a line in that's like so clever that sometimes it takes them a minute to even like catch on to it. And and she's the one who led the the panel. So she would ask the questions to to each of them and kind of direct, you know, them. And and so it worked so well. And I think she kind of does that in the podcast, too, where she was a little bit more like orchestrating the podcast. And it just it just works really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're fun. I would definitely tell people out there, go go follow them and go listen. But they're very entertaining and very informative also, too. Yeah. Um, you know, so going to Vegas now and going back to that, is there anything that maybe you would bring with you to, I guess, maybe not, not necessarily promote yourself, but make it easier to connect with people or have them find you on social media? Like, Would you bring like business cards or a digital card or any way for them to connect with you a lot easier. Okay. Interesting that you asked that because on my way down there, I did not prepare any sort of anything to give. Um, and I almost ordered business cards on my way down there. And I thought, nah, I, I'll just skip and see how it goes. And I would say, I mean, I met hundreds of people. I probably came home with only five business cards. So very few people were doing that. And no one had a digital business card that they were using other than some of the speakers had them because you could purchase their books or something like from their um, like QR code. So a few of them like were sharing that on their slide um, in their presentation, but um, no one, you know, walking around networking was doing that. So really what almost every single person did is they would just pull out their phone and swap phones with you and say like, you know, type in your name and I'll follow, you know, hit follow. And then you would swap phones back. And that's, that's basically the strategy that I would say over 90% of the people were, were using is just typing you, you know, it into Instagram uh, predominantly or uh, sometimes YouTube and, um, and they would give you a follow. And so I, I guess I will stick with that. I, I would say that, you know, you could potentially maybe make like a promotional product, like if you wanted to like give everyone a keychain with your logo on it or something that, you know, is is more of like a hands on item or like maybe a magnet or something. But it, at the same time, like, are you really going to carry like a 100 of those around? Like, probably not. So I don't I don't know. That would be the only thing that I would think might um, be like a fun, like trinket item that people could, you know, remember to look you up afterwards. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much just everyone hopping on Instagram or or whatever social media platform you preferred and and typing in your name. Interesting. Yeah. Because when I went to a um Remax convention in, in Vegas last year or or this earlier this year. Um yeah, like you're saying you you meet so many people and a lot of times you just your conversation is kind of short a lot of times. You're trying to connect. And you know, I think for me the digital cards worked well. But mm-hmm. yeah, I don't not too many people uh, use business cards anymore. I think it, it's just kind of, yeah. yeah, it's just something you got to carry around and, uh, you know, you don't want it getting down <laughs> and, you know, you don't want to pass out a business card and it's the edges are all scratched or, you know, damaged up. So I think digital cards work really well, but yeah, my, well, I was going to say my, my badges up there. I don't think I can grab it from here, but, um, a lot of people too did so like we had like name badges and they say like your, your first name on them and they say your company name on on the bottom or your business name or whatever it is and a lot of people too would just take a picture of your name badge and say like i'll look you up you know later right. and so like that was one way and which i don't know if we're gonna have like name tags at the Vegas event. But that was another thing is like I would go back instead of just putting like Sun Peak on my badge, I wish I would have put like at Sun Peak official or or my YouTube channel like, specifically that way when they took a picture and typed it in um it would pull up so that was the, that was the other way people were doing it oh ah, all right well this has been very helpful and you know hopefully we can do this after Vegas again too and talk about our experience there um yeah I'd love to take advantage of one of these events next year because there's also BP con FinCon uh, I'm sure there's a, there's quite a bit yeah, so another one I even heard about was Rubicon, R E W B, I believe, and that's going to be in St. Louis and it's a and it's a real estate wealth builders conference and it's it's on the newer side. I think this was going to be their third one maybe. But a lot of the founders were were these social media creators that were at FinCon that were in the real estate realm. And so it uh, that's another one that I'll probably look into. 
Oh, and you can connect with Joel when you go over Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, see? See, that's what it's all about, just connecting with people and, and networking and having fun. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like you want to genuinely want these relationships or they're going to like sniff you out and put you on the wayside. Like you have to be in in this for like truly having the connections and and building the the meaningful relationships. And and I think that it is well worth the time and money spent um, to go to these places. Well, if you live on the mainland, maybe it's a little pricey. <laughs> well, kind of yeah, go that's to all true. Your events from here, but. Yeah, I got to pick and Well, what you need to do is to... just get booked as a speaker and then like see if you can get your travel covered. <laughs> yeah, hopefully one day, but we'll see. Hopefully it gets to that point, but yeah, we yeah. I mean, I'm having fun, you know, met cool people like you, Hugo, you know, Tom, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I appreciate being called a cool person. Like that's not been that's not Oh been, yeah, I, I um in my about history. That story. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Did we talk about that on camera? I don't think we did. About that how was uncool off camera. That I was. was. That was off camera stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Thank. We'll do this again. And I, I know maybe, like you said, we can get some of these people that you met with and wanted to start building something that I know you were talking about and we can have them on. And Yeah. But yeah. So we'll do it again next week. And thanks again. Thanks. Okay. Bye.